Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the signal flow now that we have the API console in the mix. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, we're in Luna and we're going to talk about signal flow. So let's first off take a look here. We have a beat laid out and we're going to just quickly play it so you get a feel for it. Let's pull up our mixer again here and make things simple. Let's start with the bass over here. We have basically one track and one bus. If we take a look here at the very beginning, we have our insert or our input. And in this case, this happens to be an instrument. This could be your microphone. This also could be a pre-recorded piece of audio um, that's basically on the track like we saw with some of the other uh, tracks in here, like the drums. And essentially, this is our first point of our signal. Right after that, with a track, we have utility. And utility is where we can up or down our game. Now, the thing to think about with this, if you have an instrument, by default, within the instrument, you probably have a gain knob and you can affect how loud things are coming out from there. If it is an audio track, you can affect the clip gain, but you can use this trim tool. As you affect the gain with the trim, you affect how loud it goes into your tape. So let's quickly hit play on this bass and let's hear what happens when we do that. You get the idea, right? That is a way to hit something with more or less saturation. Maybe you have a sample that's super loud and you want to bring it down before you hit your saturation. You can, by all means, go into an audio clip, double click on it and change the gain there. But personally, I actually enjoy using the... Um, the actual trim here because it keeps you in that mixer view. It's a little bit faster when you have everything laid out to work. It's just a little less toggling back and forth. Now you have your, your tape. Now with something like the Oxide, it's very simple. You only have like a single set of um, knobs and so you really don't affect um, the gain as it goes through. You essentially have a, a linked input and output. Whereas something like the ATR-102 over here on our master, we actually have the ability to affect the gain separately by unlinking and then changing the input and the output, the, the record and the repo, the, the repro, sorry. And the repro, if you up that or whichever one, if you keep them out of link with each other, the gain can get louder. And then we go down from here and we have our console. Now all the signal passes through here in a linear fashion for the most part from the tab. So we have our input tab, then our dynamics tab, and then our EQ tab. You can affect the signal flow by using, you know, the EQ pre dynamics or using these dynamic side chains. Look into the actual documentation on that. There's some complication of how that works and I don't want to screw up the explanation. The one thing to note here, you can affect the gain going linearly down from this point by using the line amp here and pushing that through. I like doing it. Try pushing that gain because it gets a really nice punchy transparent saturated sound um, and that'll affect how it's going you know down through your inserts. And as I mentioned next is your inserts. Your API vision is an insert so you can actually change the order of where it happens. You could put for instance auto-tune before the vision. You could put it you know, at the very end of your signal. This is all your choice. Whatever you do here, everything I just said in terms of that being the next stage will change if you move it down in your inserts path. So for instance, if I grab it here, now it's after all of these other inserts. I'm gonna move it back. After this point, you have your sends. That'll send the signal out and make it run in parallel. The way to think about that, imagine that the signal that's being sent out is a duplication of this track, but you can send multiple things to ascend. And so now it's making a whole new sound with multiple things pushed into one place. Then, then from here, we have our cues, which goes to our headphones. So we won't talk about that. And then our output. In this case, the output goes into our, uh, our bus here. Now, the first thing is we have our API summing, which is bus saturation. Let's hide some of these um, sections here on the left. I'm gonna use basically just pushing um, our output into the summing. And I just wanna emphasize that this fader at the end affects how loud it goes into the bus and that'll affect how it goes into the API summing. So let's hit play and, and just give a quick demo of that.
Right, so we see the view meter on the API summon going up or basically staying all the way down. One thing we have from here, let's bring our utility back in. We can also affect how much signal is going into the API summing from the insert. When we're on the bus, the utility is pre the API summing. So let's demonstrate that. You may be wondering why is it pre? Well, let's open this up here, back to all of our other tracks. And so we have all of these drum tracks, right? Now, if we just gonna put a spill on this. So we could, let's say, when we want to push everything into our API summing. Okay, so let's say we wanna to listen to our drums only. So we could do this. where we affect the gain of all of the, the individual tracks by pushing them up and down, but that might not be ideal. We might, we might mess something up. Maybe we have automation on our tracks. It could be a whole mess, a whole different set of reasons. We have the ability to use the trim to push all of that signal in just easier all at once in unison. So let's do that. Right, and we can see the view meter going up and down. So all you need to remember really is that this is pre and it's super helpful going into buses um, when you want to get more saturation out of this, the you know API summing or the Neve summing, but you don't want to affect the staging of all of your tracks. The only other thing to mention is that the tape, you can either use it as a, a insert as a pre-fader or as a post-fader which is basically non-pre. When you insert on the master tape, it will always go in as pre-fader. When you go on tracks, it always go in post-fader. I personally like to use a pre-fader. What does this all mean? Basically, now I'm gonna bring back the you know, console inserts for visual representation. When we have a pre-fader, it essentially inserts where you see it before the console or before really your inserts. And then, you know, it, the saturation will basically be applied here. And then that signal will pass through all your inserts and then, you know, out through your output. When it is post fader, it comes in after the actual fader itself at the very end of the signal. So you actually increase the gain going into it by increasing your bus here. Essentially, you know, we have these um, ways in which we can insert the master tape saturation, and that allows us to, you know, decide if we want to apply all of our effects and push into our tape, or if we want to put the tape on as something that happens before our effects. That could be just a different set of choices from uh, a style perspective, a sound that you're trying to get. These are your options. Anyways, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, let me know. Let me know what else you would like me to cover in the comments, and otherwise, have yourself a good day. <laughs>